one's sincerity at the desire to grow and explore the depths of their being can easily be benchmarked by acceptance versus resistance. The tendency within is to resist. The vast majority of the time, the vast majority of situations, there is a tendency, a reaction toward resistance. It's protection. It's separating and getting space so that we can protect ourselves. We get into the habit of resistance so strongly that we actually often find ourselves holding back or restraining energies within or from outside even if we think they will be pleasurable. Even if we think that they might be what we want, it's almost as though we want to hold them so we can check them out and make sure that everything is going to be the right way. There's this slowing down. There's the whole control issue is done through resistance. Resistance is very prevalent. It is very strong. It becomes a tremendous habit. Acceptance, on the other hand, is very, very rare. It is rare that things can happen outside It happens sometimes, but it's rare that we just feel completely open, just completely. This thing is welcome to happen to me. This is fine. Now, even that gets subtle, because even if we're willing to accept for a moment that this is happening, you will start to see resistance to it stop happening. All right? Always control. Always pushing away pulling toward, staying in charge, keeping this going. So, again, even pleasurable things, even if we do manage to open for a moment, resistance comes in in the attempting to hold and make it happen again because then you're resisting the next moment, you're trying to keep it the same as the past moment. All I can say is if you watch and if you're open, don't get scared. Because you're going to see a lot of resistance. You're going to be very depressed when you see how much resistance there is. The move from being stuck to growing is the shift from resistance to acceptance. Acceptance is joy. Because acceptance is not interfering with the flows of energy. Under the state of acceptance, the soul is not using its will to hold energies. It is permitting the energies to flow through. They will not necessarily stay. Therefore, if they are bothersome energies, just because you don't resist them doesn't mean you're going to be stuck with them. That's what we think. We don't realize it. You don't say it. But if you'll watch, you'll see that's really what you think. If I don't resist this, it'll get in, and it's over. I'll never be happy again for the rest of my life. If you touch it, you get dirty or something. But it's not like that. It is not like that. If energies are permitted to pass through, they leave no impressions. They cause no problems. And in truth, you will attain to the point where the very act of the energies passing through you is an enjoyable experience. It's like the wind blowing through you. If you just got dressed up and you have your hair all fixed up and you're going out on some big prom date or something and your hair starts blowing around because the wind is coming and your clothes start getting disheveled because the wind is blowing, you'll be very uncomfortable with the wind. You'll find yourself trying to resist it. You'll find yourself going, walking, pushing, holding doing all kinds of things that are resistance to the energy of the wind. If, on the other hand, you're standing on top of a mountain hiking and a wind picks up and it starts blowing through your hair, oh, it's really high. It's a beautiful experience. You just feel it blowing across your face. Your hair is just blowing in the wind and you feel really uplifted. That is the difference between
between resistance and acceptance. Now you have to understand that life is wind. It picks up, it changes direction. I told you, it's weather. You have to see it all as weather. And it's just blowing through you and past you. If you are the person going out on the prom date, you have a hard time with it. Because you want to keep yourself a certain way. You want to hold everything just right. And somehow all these different energies are disturbing you. They cause problems. If you're the hiker, the outdoorsman, or woman, then these winds are beautiful. They feel good. They feel refreshing. You're not afraid of them. Even cold wind is refreshing, and hot wind is refreshing. So basically, you have to catch yourself resisting. You have to watch this process. So first you sit down and you realize, I want to do this. That's your first step. People always say, how do I do that? You have to want to. If you don't want to do something, it doesn't matter what somebody tells you, you're not going to do it anyways, when it comes right down to it. So the only thing that really matters is that you want to do it. And the opposite is true too. If you want to do it, there's not a single one of you that if you really wanted to do something, you'd do it. You find a way to do it. You don't need teachings. You don't need all these techniques. You will find a way to do it. So basically, you first have to start with, do I want to do this? Do I really want to learn not to resist? Do I really want to know what it would be like to experience life as it is? Not how I'm trying to make it. Not in the way that is most comfortable to me, but as it is. Ultimately, it's the only way you're going to be happy. Because if you spend your whole life fighting and resisting and fearing everything, you have a frightful life. It's no fun. So you start by checking it out and saying, do I really want to be so afraid of all these things? Do I really want control? That's a good question to ask. Control is a heavy thing to have. Once you ask for control, you have to hold it together forever. You have to sit at the console and check all the dials and push all the buttons. You don't never get to go on vacation because if you go on vacation, who knows what's going to happen to all the control issues. You can't look up. You can't look down. You can't enjoy the stars. You can't do anything. You have to stay in control. So eventually you get to the point of realizing, I don't want to. That's not what I want to do. It is not that I don't want to stay with my husband or wife. It is not that I don't want to continue my job. It is not that I don't want to take care of the children. It's not that, I, it's not that you want to renounce and run away and be irresponsible. It is that you don't want to be in control. That you would much rather experience whatever will naturally unfold and enjoy the experience. Will there be times when things appear or actually do unfold in a way that causes disturbance inside of you? You want a serious answer? No matter how high you get? Yes. Yes. Yogananda in his writings and book, he said right up to the very end, he would see that God would test him and that things would happen that would create some changes in his energy. And he liked that. The yogis are not afraid of this. People want to define which experiences they get to have. I would love to take people aside and say, but then you didn't get to have that experience. How do you know what experience is going to be the best? You only know what your mind is thinking up. You have no idea. So instead, you give up control. It's an awesome thing to do. You give it up. You stay conscious. You stay present. You stay interacting with the moments that are unfolding before you, but you don't take as your prime motive to protect yourself and to keep these things under hand. What will happen is you will start to feel resistance to everything. That's the greatest thing you guys, I know how you're growing, is when you say, okay, I'm just going to wake up from this point, just catch yourself when you first wake up, and I'm going to go through this entire day, and I'm not going to resist anything. I'm just going to experience whatever unfolds and participate in whatever energies are brought before me. And you're going to find that you probably won't make it out of bed in that state. <laughs> you don't understand how much you resist. It's absolutely inconceivable. It's beyond comprehension. 
If you're sitting there and you're married and all of a sudden you say, I'm going to do that, and then your husband or wife rolls over in bed and their feet are cold and it touches you, you resist. If somebody starts to get out of bed and so it gets cold and it's blowing, or if the window is open, you left it open at night, and all of a sudden you have to get out and it's a little bit cold, anything, you hear a noise, it don't make any difference in any way, shape, or form. You think for a minute all the work you have to do or who you have to go talk to and you don't want to get out of anything. You will resist the touch, you will resist the wind, you will resist the sound, you will resist the thought. Do you see what I'm talking about? It is such a habit, you have no idea how deep this is. We resist all of it. And we try to just get it a certain way. We make this little tiny pathway that if it's like this, I'll make it through. But it's never like that. And so we end up getting thrown all over the place. And we waste all of our energy trying to control it instead of using our energy to experience and express. That's why you always feel, people always tell me, it seems like I went for years and I, I can't really touch it. It's like life just keeps flying by and it's like I'm not living it. Because you can't really experience deep enough. It's like there's this haze that I'm living in and it's all at a distance. That's experience and the same thing is true of expression. How often do you really feel that you're free to express, that you really can take all the energies from within and really share or express? No. Why? It is because of the control issues. The control issues want to sit there and say, if I get them the way I want, I'll really be able to express. If you just behave just exactly right, and if this is right, and the weather is right, and the situation is right, whoa, I'm going to be so open, you won't be able to stop me. And it's the same thing with experience. God, if we get there on just the right day and everything's right and there aren't a lot of people around, or right? I'm not comfortable at all with a lot of people, and all this is here and all that's like that, whoa, it's going to hit me so deep, I can't wait to get there. That is control. That thing in there wants to stay in control. And to the extent that that thing is the boss and is sitting in a control seat, it creates a wall. It has to create a wall. It is a wall of will that all energies coming in have to stop and say, excuse me, sir, may I come in there? And the control issue goes, mm, what are you going to do when you get in here? How can I be sure? Mellow out a little bit first. Take a left. It wants to check it out, look at it, control it, and then what does it do? It goes, come on, I wish you could watch yourself. You stop it first. Here it is. Now what? When you decide you'll let it in, what do you do? Drop your guard? You wouldn't know how to drop your guard. People try for years and years and years and years, and they don't get it down at all. <laughs> you hold it here, and when you decide, okay, this is what you mean by I'll be open. All right, I'll let you talk to me. I'll be open. I've decided, you know, you're not really evil, and you're really you have some good, and you're in a good mood, and you're not drunk. And I checked every single thing out. Now I'm going to let you in. All right, you ready? All right, you in? How close you let it in? How close? Not very close at all. Not a million miles from you. Just a little bit more than what you let something else in. And that's what you feel is open. That is not open. That is complete resistance at all times. So control keeps experiences from coming in. It creates a wall. And control absolutely keeps experiences of expression from taking place. That's control. It's very, very strong. Control is resistance. You do not control acceptance. Acceptance is when there is no control. Acceptance is when the energies are free to flow in and free to express out because the little control being is not on guard. All right? And has released this. Now, well, basically... If you suppress a lot and you have a real strong control being, then what you hear, when we, especially when we talk about energies coming out, is what I call losing it. Is that basically the energies build up so strong inside that they're stronger than your control. And you go out of control. That's a whole other level. That's nothing. That's just a blow up. So basically it built up inside and it blew up enough to come flying out. That's not what expression is. Expression are the moments that an artist has when the walls come down and the merger and involvement with the work 
is strong enough to where you merge, to where you don't know you're there. The control has come down. And there's a beauty, an unbelievable beauty, in the experience of merger between the inner energy and the outer. No walls, no control. It's pure inspiration, pure expression. It can happen in playing music. It can happen in artwork. It certainly can happen in love. It can happen in many, many different things. But how often does it happen? I don't want to ask. I don't want to embarrass anybody. You know, if it happens twice a year, those are the only two times we remember about the whole year, years later. It sure as heck doesn't happen every day. It sure as heck doesn't happen every minute. And that's what it should. All right? You, these are not rare moments. These things that people call quality time and special moments. All of life is quality time. Every moment is a special moment. The only problem is that the control issues get in the way. They get in the way of the energies coming in and they get in the way of the pure energies experiencing and expressing from out. How do you get it down? How do you release this control issue? First, understand the discussion we're having is very deep. You're not going to go to some weekend intensive and get rid of your control issues. You'd like to think so. It's not true. It's not even close. You will be through with your control issues when you're enlightened. Because the ego must have control. That is where the ego comes from. It is attempting to protect itself. It is attempting to, to define itself by controlling the thoughts, emotions, and outer circumstances so that it's not afraid. We've discussed that a million times. Why would somebody want to control? Why do you want to control? There's only one reason. Fear. Fear forces you to want to control. If you're sitting there and you're skydiving, for a while you're supposed to be free-falling. Or if you bungee jump, all right? Can you imagine a person with strong control issues trying to bungee jump? <laughs> it's like every step of the way they're holding on. There's nothing to hold on to. It don't matter. You can see it. They can't let go. You understand that? So basically, your ego is doing this because of fear. It all comes out of fear. I want you to watch that all the time. Well, even intimate moments, people can't let go. They have to be in control. Why? They're afraid. Even with people you know for so long, you're married to and so on, you can't let go. You can't get out of the way. It's okay. It's true of most people. All right? It's very rare for people to be able to literally just put it aside and permit situations to take place, to unfold. And so basically, what you have to look at if you want to deal with these things is you have to look at the fear. You have to be willing to realize, I'm scared. And then, like I said, once you see it clearly, you have to be willing to say, this is worth an investment. This is worth... People spend so much time trying to become a doctor. They spend so much time perfecting a relationship. They spend so much time... Don't people come to me and say, but meditation is hard. I mean, look what people do for nothing. <laughs> I mean, they get nothing. What do they get? All right? They spend years and 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 they get divorced. They sit there and they go to medical school for all these years and they become intern and they do all these things, you know, and then they have to go work for somebody because they can't make a living anymore. All kinds of things happen to people who invest a tremendous amount of energy into something. So, of course, you have to invest energy into this. Of course it's not easy. Of course it's not. Because the rewards are the greatest reward that ever existed. The reward you get from this investment is your life. <laughs> you get your whole life. Every minute of it, every second of it. Not just once in a while. So it is worth the investment. Once you see that, then move away from control. Because that's hard to deal with. I don't want to control. You don't know what to do. And move back to where we started. Move back to acceptance versus resistance. Because that's going to be your guide all the way along the way. You know what it feels like to resist? Don't resist. Notice I didn't say don't feel resistance. Take no responsibility for the state you're in right now. It's not your fault. 
It's all just left over from fear. So if you feel resistance starting to come up, don't resist the resistance. You're just reinforcing the control issues. Somebody with strong control issues who decides not to control will just end up controlling the control. <laughs> nothing happens. Nothing changes. This is very subtle. Don't resist the resistance. So you will start to feel the resistance come, whatever it is. Be aware of this. See this. And when you see yourself saying, I shouldn't feel this, I don't want to do that, that's resistance of the resistance. Don't do that either. Now what? Open. Right there at the moment where you see it happening, the wind is blowing, your hair is starting to get messy, and all the noise is starting, all right? Let it get messy. No. Yes. Don't resist. Be more interested in learning not to resist than you are whether your hair gets messed up. You'll just brush it again later. What's the difference? At least you didn't waste the situation where you could learn to not resist. Eventually you will find things will not hurt you. They will not. They will pass through you. The only thing that hurts is you. Is this constantly having to hold everything together is painful. So when the wind blows, each moment, just little things each time, don't resist. Don't resist. Don't resist. Be open. Even if somebody else was wrong. Even if, see, what you do is because somebody else was wrong and because you don't like the wind, you think now your situation is to resist so it doesn't happen again. Okay? And you sit there and do all that. Depends on how much you want to grow. If you want to grow, you're watching your own heart and you're saying, I am going to use this to explore myself. I'm not going to use this to train somebody else. I'm not going to use this to protect myself. I'm going to use this to go to God. Period. It's okay. Believe me, you get to do this. God likes this. So if you are willing to use the wind, the situation, in order to release, relax and release the issues that are going on inside of you, you are already doing the work you care about. What happens outside doesn't matter. It's not going to last anyways. It just passes in the breeze. It's just wind blowing through. It's okay. If you're willing to go through it, it can't bother you. And that's the key. So basically, you turn resistance into acceptance on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Period. You just do the best you can, and that's good enough. There's no such thing as that's not good enough. It's okay. Because you did the best you could. And the best you could is always good enough. Period. It's not your con conceptual good enough. But if you are really doing the best you can with each moment, you will win. You will win. It is impossible that you will not succeed. Absolutely impossible. You will receive all the help of all the forces of the universe. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be the next day. It may not be the next day. It may not be the next day. But if each time you sincerely, no games, you sincerely do the best you can in turning resistance into acceptance. Just let it get a little closer. Just one more time. Just let it hit the wall. Let it come. All right? And what you'll find is, it's embarrassing because you're not as, as clean as you thought you were. That even sometimes when you decide, I'm going to let this pass through. For this hour with my parents, I'm not going to get in any fights. I'm going to let them talk to me the way they need to. I'm going to come to know them. I'm not going to try and convince them who I am or what my trip is or make them look at me this way or impress them or get acceptance or do anything. I'm just going to kind of like be there. All right? So you sit there. Things start coming. You watch it. You may find that you can't do it. You might find that. You might find that it's happening and you're relaxing, you're letting go, and the next thing you know, you're in an argument. And you don't even know how happened. You were relaxing and now you're fighting. And so, you catch yourself and you do the best you can in a moment. You just keep doing the best you can and have fun at the game. It has to be like a sport. A sport is no fun if every time you pick up the ball you just run as far as you want. That's not what's happening. 
There is a challenge here. There is a game here. There's a sport. There's a leela. The day that you have set your goals at turning every moment of resistance into a moment of acceptance and you have become wise enough to realize it's not going to happen in one day, but you're willing to give it your absolute best every moment, and you have decided it's fun. You say this is a fun thing to do, is to watch resistance and see if you can turn it into acceptance. And it's fine with you if you do that every moment for the rest of your life. That's a much more fun thing to do than what you used to do, which is try to resist so much that it, you don't have to resist anymore. That's what we're trying to do. If I resist enough, I won't have to resist anymore. I'll get everything the way I want and I won't have to resist anymore and I'll be able to be totally open because it'll stay the way I want. That works really good, doesn't it? It doesn't work at all. So you learn to remain centered. We've been through that a million times. If you have trouble remaining aware of your resistance, then meditate more. Meditate. Meditation always works. Don't come to me and say, yeah, but you know, I'm not having good meditations. You are so. You are. There's no such thing as a bad meditation. Just the fact that you sat there whatever length of time and you noticed that you couldn't get in is a good meditation because it means you remain conscious. You noticed how neurotic you were. You noticed how resistant you were. You noticed how fidgety you were. You became more conscious just because you took that time to sit there. That's why meditation is so powerful. It is the gift-giving tree. It's the greatest act. Because if you get in, huh, that's the day. Tremendous peace comes over your being and there's a door. If you can get past the noise, it's very beautiful in there. But even if you can't get past the noise, you practice awareness and consciousness and you will find then during the day that you will remain more conscious during the day-to-day situations. At some point, things will start to happen which something inside of you will say, I can't accept this. I can't accept this. I can't accept this. And I know you'll do whatever you want at those moments, but we're just sharing. Those are the most important things in your whole life. When it gets to the point that that thing in there is saying, I can't accept this, I won't accept, I will not accept this, I will not let this happen. It's all the more fun when it's saying, I will not let that this has happened. (laughs) I will not accept that this happened to me. I will not. Okay? That's so beautiful. You're now at the core of your ego. You're at the core of the control issue. Okay? Like basically anything that happens, anything that's happening is life. You cannot separate it out and say, the part I want is life. Your alternative is to not say, I will not let this happen to me, or I will not let this have happened to me, and no, I will not accept this, I will not accept this, I will not. All right? Instead, you sit there and say, oh boy, this one's going to be fun. Simple as that things that big they only come around once in a while how would you waste it can you imagine if you took that party you were saying no and just said sorry you and I were on different sides of the team this time you play ball your way I'm going to play ball my way he don't like that at all no you don't understand you're supposed to be on my side I thought I thought you were my friend I am your friend but we're going to do it different this time I'm just not going to put my heart into resisting what is I'm not But what if it's really painful? Then I will use the pain to take me to God. I will certainly not spend my whole life avoiding the pain, fearing the pain. And so you let the wind blow on that part of your being. And you'll find that it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It's not an issue. It's okay. It is your resistance to the energy that hurts. The strongest wind in the world can blow through you. I was thinking the other day, that it's like a Hercules task. Remember when Hercules had to clean the stable? That was one of the Hercules tasks, the horse stables. And no one could clean them in the period of time he was given. And they all thought he was going to fail, and he'd go in there with a shovel and start digging all this stuff out, and it would take a year, and he had a day. And instead, he went outside the stable, and he redirected the course of the river, and swung it 
So it ran right through. And woof, in two seconds, the water washed all the stables absolutely clear. And he succeeded in that challenge, in that task. This wind is the same way. You ain't going to get nowhere messing with this stuff yourself. Open up. And that wind will blow through you. And don't resist when it's here, 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 and it will blow right through you and take everything it needs to take, and you'll honor it. So, now do you see how to work with it? It's your choice. Turn resistance into acceptance. Jackative.